in landscape like I always do. And what did I get? I got portrait mode again, just like last week. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, I have to gonna have to figure that one out for sure. So happy Sunday. Um, that's why I'm a couple minutes late because I was trying to get the phone flipped <laughs> so <laughs> it could be um, landscape mode instead of portrait. So I don't know what I'm doing there. Hey Haley. Hey Angela. Hey Vias. Hey Lucas. Um, so. If any of you guys have ever had that problem live streaming, hey Nicola, where <laughs> you're trying to do it landscape, which is the way it's supposed to be on YouTube, but it's like, it gave me the option before I came on to, it said, click here to rotate to landscape. And I kept clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking and it did nothing. So then I, um, the only other option was do it in portrait. So I had to click do it in portrait style. So if any of you guys know how, like if that has ever happened to you and you know what the secret is to make it flip the correct way. Like I know my thumbnail was a mess last week. I don't know what it's gonna be like today. Uh, yes, I definitely, where did I put my lemon water? Here it is. I definitely do not put sugar in it. It's not lemonade, it's lemon water. Oh, thanks, Lizzie. Enjoy your day. Ask Giovanna, see if she's ever run into that. That's a good idea. We were chatting, chatting it up last night. <laughs> so, work it out. Oh, Elena's here. Work it out. What do you guys need to work out in your life? Thank you, Lucas. I'm glad you like my necklace. Uh, what, what is it that you need to work out in your life? Do you know? Yes, Lily, I'm using my phone. I would not have this problem if I was on my computer, but I've heard some of you guys say that when I'm on my computer doing the live stream that you can't hear me as well. I don't, I'm not sure why that would be, but that's what some of you guys have mentioned. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why, why that is the way it is. So, um, that's, that's the deal today. Won't, it won't affect anything. It's just kind of annoying. You know, as a filmmaker, you always want to have it, um, landscape instead of portrait. So, cause that's how we enjoy movies, right? And that's how we enjoy YouTube. And, um, this is not Instagram. So tell me what's, what's on your, what's, what's on your guys' mind today? I know I have a topic I would like to talk about. Um, I would like to talk about working it out. What does that mean? What does that mean, work it out? You know, you, you hear people say, I gotta go work it out. They're, they're going to the gym. You hear people say who, who are going to get a massage, they've got a knot in their shoulder. I gotta get this thing worked out, right? You hear people who've gotten in a fight with someone or had an issue at work and they're like, we got, we got to work this out, right? We got to work this out. So that could mean a lot of things. And that's what I titled today's session. There's a lot of things we could work out. Uh, looks like there's a question. What happened to Michael Vaccaro, Julianne Ser Serrano? How come you don't see them? Will they return? I... I think so. I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, you guys, look look at the videos that have been coming out lately. If you look at the videos that are coming out lately, you'll see, I mean, at least in Michael Vaccaro's case, if there was a role that they would fit, maybe, I mean, maybe I saw one recently, but it was such a tiny role. Like I saw one recently, um, the girl that auditions and the guy auditions and he's bad, but he pretends to like this girl so he gets the part. Whichever one that was. The guy playing the co-director of the play, kind of like the sleazy jerk guy. That I suppose could have been done by Michael, but um, 
it was such a small role. I think they, I think they use him for the bigger, bigger roles than that. Does that make sense? So sometimes you don't see someone because there's not a role that's right for them. You know, when, when they got their new set a couple of years ago and they started doing all these different kids, high school stories, you didn't see me a lot because uh, it was all about the kids. So I, there was like two months straight that I didn't shoot anything for Darman because the scripts that were coming out didn't fit me, how, didn't fit how they saw me. Now, since then, I've played a teacher once or twice. Um, but I guess they initially didn't see me as a teacher. They saw me like as the mom or the Karen or something. <laughs> a couple times I was a teacher who was a Karen. Um, but yeah, so it depends on, you know, if they have a role that is right for them. And, um, that's just, that's kind of normal. All right. Uh, let's see. Derek, thank you for the gift. How do you get strength to pick women up in your wrestling videos? Well, there's two, there's two things about it. There's a lot of training you have to do to get upper body strength because women don't typically have upper body strength compared to men. Women are stronger in their legs and men are stronger in their upper body. So there's a lot of conditioning and working out you have to do. But also in wrestling, wrestling is a team sport. Not high school wrestling or that kind of wrestling because that's every man for himself. But when you're doing pro wrestling, it's kind of a partner sport because it's part wrestling, but it's also part show. So when you're doing, for instance, a body slam, everybody knows like the techniques. If you're a pro wrestler, what you do, you got to put one arm over the opposite of the girl's shoulder, up, not the one next to you, but the one opposite. And then you have to scoop one arm under her crotch and then you flip her up like this. And this arm is holding basically all the weight. This arm is making sure her legs don't flop over. So you've got her upside down and then you're able to throw her down. But the secret is posting. So a gymnast will know what, a, what posting is. Posting is when I flip her, when I'm about to flip her upside down, she puts, I don't you can't see it, I was trying to hold my leg up. You got your leg up. She has to put her hand on your leg as you're flipping her. So she's pushing, she's supposed to take some of her body weight off you. If that's, when she sees that's the move you're doing, she's supposed to, it's not just to take her body weight off you, it's so she's secure and she doesn't fall. So she puts her hand there. You've got the hand here, the hand here. So once she's flipped upside down, her hand is here. So it's almost like she's going to do a cartwheel and she's putting, like almost like putting her hand on the ground, but she's putting it on your leg. And when she puts it on your leg, that gives her stability. It also takes a little bit of weight off you. So what I found when I was wrestling, Girls who were new or didn't know their role in posting, they, I could have um, like a 110 pound girl that would be so heavy because she was like dead weight. And, but if I had a girl who knew how to post properly and help alleviate some of the heaviness, I could body slam 170 or 180 pound woman who knew how to post as opposed to a 110 pound woman who didn't know how to post. That was a long answer. So part of it is strength. Part of it is your partner knowing the techniques to make themselves light. So I had people tell me I probably at the time when I was wrestling, I was pretty strong. Um, and I had people tell me, like I was like 150 pounds, and people would say, oh my God, you're easier to lift and do these moves than the like the 95 pound girl, because I knew how to take the weight off myself. I knew how to be light. Um, so anyway, it was a really long answer. Thank you for the gift, Angela. That's so great. Uh, would you ever act in a superhero film on a TV show? Sure. Sure, why not? I probably wouldn't be turning that down. 
I uh, loved you as Mikey and Jay's mom when they cheated at the game center. I literally watched it twice. Thank you. It's a kind of a small role there. Uh, just this the typical, just the typical Mikey mom. Um, we'll come back. Fortnite back to your lives. Okay. Have you heard Michaela Moody, who played Madison in the Toxic Girlfriend recent episode of the school play? Have I heard of her? No, I, I don't know. It might be the first time I saw her. Thank you for the gift, Lily. Fist bump right back at you. Okay, I'm back. I'll probably be in and out of your life. Okay. All right, so let's talk about working it out. And I'm going to read a little bit from my book, Poetic Prescriptions for Eternal Youth. If you guys want a copy of this book for free, go to poeticprescriptions.com forward slash free book. Okay, this is called Work It Out. Now, to exercise your body helps a bit, but being godly helps a lot. That's a scripture. That's a scripture that I used to read from the Apostle Paul, and that would get me to justify not having to work out. I'd be like, you know what? Scripture says it's better for me to sit here and like read the Bible and pray than it is work out. <laughs> To exercise your body helps a bit, but being godly helps a lot. I use that verse as an excuse to sit glued to my desk all day to rot. And I would, I would be at my desk 16, 18 hours a day working on my stuff. I'm trying to cut it down to 12 hours now. So I'm trying to pace myself and not work so much. Some say that sedentary life is bad. Do you guys know research has shown it has the same effects as smoking? I'll never make the time to run those laps. Those stupid studies must be joking. So they did. They did studies that show being sedentary, sitting around all day, is as bad as smoking cigarettes. So you gotta get up and move your body. So the next, the next verse was, The temple of the Holy Spirit's us. So we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So glorify God in your body. So here's how I justified that. So I assume that means abstain from lust and hold the commandments that keep us holy. Blah, 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 the benefits of exercise. Keeps a healthy heart, decreases stress, holds back disease, builds up immunities. Come on, exercise is just so you'll look cute undressed. So there was me not believing the studies because I didn't feel like exercising. This is the old me, by the way, <laughs> that I wrote about. The old me. I'm told that working out would be a plus, yet I don't do it like I should. It sharpens memory, gains brain proteins, endorphins make you feel so good. And yet I don't recall a single time enjoying making myself sweat I didn't feel smarter afterwards, but like I wasted time that I regret. It fights the age, stops cognitive decline, makes dopamine, helps addicts chill. Anxiety will ease. You can relax. A workout's like a sleeping pill. I am zonked without workouts. I can sleep. I hibernate just on a whim. It fights cognitive decline. Well, then, then how come I lose my keys before I leave the gym? So here's me arguing back and forth with myself about why I don't want to exercise, why I don't feel like it, counteracting all the studies that show, oh, well, it makes you smarter, it helps you sleep. I'm like, I don't need that for sleep. Oh, well, if it makes you smarter, then how come I lose my keys after the gym? You know? <laughs> I'm lazy. Yet the Bible seems to hint, Beloved, I pray that you're in health. So discipline your shape so when you preach, you won't disqualify yourself. Ooh, that one stung. That one stung. That is also by the eminent Apostle Paul. So we have to, you know, keep ourselves, keep this shell of ours in some sort of a, you know, keep it in a way that, people would want to hear from us, right? I have a, a poem in this book called BMI that really expands upon that more. So that's what we have to do. We have to like keep ourselves not only 
because we are, you know, our body is a temple of God. We want to be healthy. We want to be disease free. We want to put the right things in so that we have not just the stamina and it's not necessarily about aesthetics, but we want to be able to have what we need to go on. Um, yeah, we want to have strength to be able to go on. So why does it have to be so hard, right? Can't God just blink his eyes and make me fit? If self-restraint is touted as so good, how come I can't make my flesh submit? Anyone hear that? Okay, so here I am reading the silly book about working out and, and JB is on here and I don't know if you're being serious or not, um, but do you need some help? Do you need some counseling? Do you need some therapy? Are you having bad feelings? Do you have to, do you need to be talked out of doing something that's gonna hurt yourself? I don't know what's going on with you, but is this something that needs to be addressed? Do you need to call? I don't know if you're in the United States, but there's a suicide hotline you can call and it's a free number. You can just type it in on your phone, Google it, you know. So I just wanted to st stop and say something. Okay, you, you're fine, you're not. Okay, I don't know why you would ask that question about death, so. Don't, don't get us all scared. And you guys, that, that is not something to kid about. Um, that's serious. I have lost two friends in high school to suicide. So when I see a comment like that, I, I'm going to stop everything and address it. Because if you need some help, then it's important that we get it. And, and okay, JB says he's sorry for saying that. Yeah, so that's something, you guys, whoo. You definitely don't want to joke about that kind of stuff. Um, Lucas, I was, I think I was in a Dharma Man video that came out this week. Was the one with Mikey and Jaden cheating at the arcade, was that this week? I think I was in, well, I know I was in that one. Um, you know what, Venus? I didn't get a good enough look at Madison. Um, I didn't get a good enough look at her acting skills to have a comment on that yet. I think it's the first time I've seen her. I'm not sure. Um, Skull Gaming, I am doing well. <laughs> okay, so back to our regularly scheduled program. I only had two paragraphs left. Are you guys like me? Do you like hate working out too and you have to like force yourself and you have to think of all the benefits? Um, Nicholas says, I like when you and Shantae do vids together. You should do a reaction with her. I did do... A reaction video thing with her recently but I haven't watched it it was like we were reacting to like really weird and bizarre stuff and we were both like what the heck is this what are what are we doing we're, this is just silly um so we both felt some kind of way about it so ne neither of us had watched it on the reaction channel Nicholas seems to think it's good well that's good because we felt pretty silly Pretty felt, felt pretty silly doing that. So, I used to not, when, when I got the revelation, you guys know I talk a lot about self-worth. When I got the revelation of self-worth and how much we mean to God and how important we are and <laughs> the revelation that you are worthy, that we are worthy um, no matter what we look like, no matter what our background is, no matter how smart we are. I kind of like stop caring about the outer shell, you know, and I, and I got a little lazy, you know, I stopped like, <laughs> my husband would be like, um, you can't, you shouldn't be leaving the house with like stains all over your t-shirt and look at a mess, you know? And so it's interesting when when you quit something or you get a revelation of that you have the same pillow, Angela. <laughs> awesome. Um, sometimes the pendulum swings so far the other way. Like if you ha know someone who's an ex smoker, they go from like smoking to like I don't want to be around anyone who smokes. I don't want to have. Blah, blah, blah. And so, like, 
when I used to hate myself and thought it was so important how I looked, and then I got the revelation that God loved me no matter what, I went way to the other side. And I was like, who cares what I look like? I don't have to comb my hair or take a shower or wear clothes that are clean. <laughs> and the truth is, you got to kind of be somewhere in the middle. Because, right, how can you share the gospel if someone has to wear a gas mask to sit next to you? Um, how can you tell people about how God is so wonderful? How can you tell people about how God is going to... I talk about this in my BMI poem. How can you tell God how God is so wonderful if you can't get your... If you look like you're a hot mess and you don't have your life together. So there had to be some middle ground and also realizing... Um, I talk about this in my You Are Chosen course. Talk about what the image we portray to the to the outside world when we are we are daughters and sons of the king we are we have the mantle of daughter of the king right son of the king we are prince and princesses and we represent the kingdom of god so we we don't want to go around looking like we crawled out of a garbage can not because god cares about outer appearance because we learned that from samuel right the book of samuel which i talk about in my you are worthy course but god judges on the inward appearance, but the outside world judges by the heart. So because the outside world judges by outward things, there might be people you want to reach, people you want to help. And if you look like, if you're looking like you haven't showered in weeks and you've got a rat's nest for a hair, people might not want to hear what you have to say. Oh yeah, so somebody's asking about where they could get the pillow. I have a lot of different merch with cool designs. I try to put out a new design about every month. And so if you go to catnorlandmerch.redbubble.com, you can get it. So the our outside doesn't matter to God, and it doesn't matter for our worth, our, our self-worth, and how God feels about us, and how we should feel about ourselves has no bearing on what size we are, Oh yeah, Nicola has my phone case. Did you get, which one did you get? Did you get the Live True, Love Hard, Shine Bright? I can't remember which one you got. So the outside doesn't matter, but because it attracts people to you who may need to learn about God, who may need to be encouraged and uplifted from you, it's important to keep some semblance of order and, and try to look, you know, try to look decent like you are a child of the king, which you are, because some people won't want to hear from you if you don't. So I have noticed, you know, sometimes you guys watch my regular videos on Mondays and Wednesdays. And a lot of times I just, uh, an idea pops in my head. I feel like I have a message I want to share with you guys. I don't stop a lot of times and go comb my hair or put on makeup. Because I just like, I just want to get this out, right? I just want to get this message out. And I notice, like, I've seen the numbers. <laughs> when I have a, a, a video out where I'm like all glamorous, hair and makeup done, nice outfit, I get way more views. And then when I'm just like sitting in my office with no makeup, messy hair, and I'm giving, could be a life-changing, phenomenal message that could change your life, I won't get as many views. So it's interesting how people will, and you guys are all guilty of this, and you know you are. You will, like, you, you open up streaming services, and a lot of times you're picking what to watch based on the thumbnail. And you're going to pick the one with the better looking thumbnail. Now, it could be the one with a terrible thumbnail or no thumbnail is got this amazing life-changing message but we're so trained to look at things aesthetically and how they look on the outside that you're going to pick the one with a better thumbnail, even if it's not necessarily better quality content. Now, you know, y'all have been guilty of that. Okay. Yes, guys, I did get a TikTok account two weeks ago. Exactly. Two weeks ago, I got a TikTok account. It was a silly reason why I didn't have one for a long time. Because like over a year ago, I think, when I tried to get one, I realized, oh, thank you, Saya. She says, I appreciate your existence. Jackie Ray said she follows me. I think I've seen a comment from you on there. Yeah, you use, this, you use the same picture. So 
I didn't get one because when I went on to get my TikTok account, I saw somebody took my name, took my picture, took a video of mine, and was pretending to be me. And I was like mad. I was like, I don't want a TikTok account unless it's my name. This person who took my stuff and is pretending to be me, I, I'm, I'm not going to get a TikTok page till they give me my name back. And of course, I tried contacting them multiple times. I couldn't get a message to go through. They must have had their messages turned off so you can't send them. They could be a fan, but they should have at least said that they were a fan page. The person who took my name. and, and Or they could have wrote Catherine Norland fan or Catherine Norland fan page, right? Instead of pretending to be me. They didn't put up a video saying, I'm, a, I'm her fan. I'm gonna, this page is going to be dedicated to her. No, they're just taking my stuff and putting on pretending to be me. There's a few pages like that up there. And then I contacted TikTok twice. Um, so, you know, they didn't do anything about it. And then finally, I was like, forget it. I'll just be Cat Norland because I'm already Cat Norland on my merch, right? Cat Norland merch. I'm already Cat Norland on Facebook. And I'm Cat Norland on something else, too. I don't know what. So... There you, you have it. So sometimes, oh, my backup Instagram account is Cat Norland. Because remember that time somebody stole my regular account? So, yeah, it, it is what it is. So, yes, Jackie, I did like your video. So, back to the topic at hand. Present yourself a living sacrifice. Brittany says you'll always be Cat to me. So a lot of people call me Cat. It's a nickname. I just, you know how you want for branding purposes, you're named the same on all the platforms so people don't get confused. So that was really what it was about. So maybe when new platforms come out, I just need to snag my name immediately before anybody else does. Oh gosh. Okay. Present yourself a living sacrifice. That's what the scripture says. But I'm a burnt out offering. I'm not holy. I'm not acceptable to God. I wonder if I'm honoring the king. So, here's the deal. Getting out of bed each day is a start, but apparently it's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough just to get out of bed each day. I have to make an effort with this bod to be robust, right? To be strong, to be, like, physically fit. Not Maybe not buff. I don't have to get buff. I don't have to have, like, veins in my arms and, like... 10% body fat, which is like nothing. I'm probably like 50% right now. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's not that bad. But um, only athlete, only female athletes really get down to 10, 10%. <laughs> okay. Does it matter? I laugh about it, not because I care, but I'm trying to lighten the mood, guys. Some of you guys care about this kind of stuff, and I want you to like there's a balance. I want you to let go of like the fear of having to look a certain way, having to be a certain size, having to weigh a certain number, not liking yourself if you don't, because that you're wasting your life. If you guys are constantly obsessing about what you should eat, what you should wear, right? They talk about this in Luke and in the book of Matthew. You're constantly obsessing about what you should eat, what you should wear, what you should... God says that's what the unbelievers worry about. Don't you know your Father in Heaven's going to take care of you? You don't need to worry about any of that stuff. He gives his power to the faint. That's good because it's only him that could persuade me off my rusty dusty to work out since it's been more than a decade. Scripture says you won't, go re you won't grow weary when you faint. And Christ whose might will strengthen you. He makes up for each weakness that I have. And that's a lot more than a few. How many of you guys feel like that? Like, oh my God, I've got so many things wrong with me. I've got so many issues. I need God to like help me through these. Don't run aimlessly, scripture says. Don't shadow box. Fight faith's good fight. Keep up the pace. You must compete according to the rules or you'll be left out from the race. I want to live the best life I can. Here's what it comes down to, right? I want to live the best life I can and longevity, like to have a long life, to fulfill the purpose and calling God has in your life, to be here long enough without disease to do what you're called to do. Longevity is based on your health. 
just working out, just working, which I sit at my desk all day and do, just working with no working out is death and it won't bring me a lasting wealth. So let's lay aside what's our excuse and with endurance run the race we're in. Let's sprint so we can obtain the prize. Right? If you're in a race, you're sprinting. You're trying to get to that finish line. For though all who run, there's only one who get the prize. Though I may dread my body's training time, I'm like, oh, oh, I don't want to work out. <laughs> though I may dread my body's training time, may my heart may palpitate, my muscles may throb, but you know what? Sometimes with fear and trembling, I do quake to work out my salvation is my job, right? This whole poem is about working it out, working it out. And we worry about working out, working it out. But really, the one thing you need to work out in your life is your salvation. Where are you going to go when you die? Do you guys know the answer to that? When you leave this place... Where are you going to go? It's two choices. Two choices. One's got air conditioning. The other doesn't. Okay. Oh my gosh. I missed a lot of your content, the comments. Let me try to go back. Let me try to go back and find, um, find where I left off. Okay. Via says, don't make somebody a priority when all you are to them is an option. What are some signs you are just an option to someone? I think you know. I think you know, and that's why you're asking. You just want some confirmation. You, you, your spirit knows. You know when you're being left aside. You know when they're putting people in front of you. Not that people aren't allowed to have other friends, um, but I feel like you know. You know when you're not somebody in somebody's inner circle. Um. Okay, Catherine, who's your favorite character in the Bible? Hmm. Without knowing all of them extensively and what they've done, off the, off the top of my head, I would say John the Baptist. And I've written a poem about him. He's the guy, he's the guy, he's like out in the wilderness. They say he's living off honey and locusts. He's wearing itchy camel's hair. And he's, he's proclaiming, God is coming. Look for him. God is coming. And like nobody wants to listen to him. Again, because he didn't look all nice. I talk about this in my You Are Worthy course, right? He's the one like shouting, God is coming. And nobody wants to listen to him. And, and sometimes I feel like him. I'm like, is anybody listening? Do you know? Like, this is serious. This, this planet isn't all there is. It's such a tiny fraction of it. And that's another reason for you guys not to get so worked up and worried about things. Is because life on earth, you may feel like, oh my God, it's everything. What this person thinks of me is, oh my gosh, if they don't, oh. And you get so worked up. And you're like, this earth is such a tiny blip. It's such a tiny blip of like nothing. It's just, and it ends up being like, Imagine you're going to go on forever and ever 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 and there's going to be no end. Are you going to be in the good place where there's no end or are you going to be in the place made for the devil and the demons where there is no end, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth and burning flesh? Oh my gosh, I'm getting deep today. I did not intend to go there. I was just reading a silly poem about working it out, working out. But I have to go with what's coming to me, right? I have to go with what's coming. And some of you guys needed to hear that because you have to make a decision. This rapper wrote a, wrote a song once and one of the lyrics was, you better get right or you're gonna get left. You guys ever seen the Left Behind series or read the books? Uh, Syrevin, I am doing good. Um, Nicola, no, I do not like to be called Kathy. I despise the name Kathy for me. I know a lot of beautiful Kathys, but for me, it's got to be Kat or Catherine. 
<laughs> All right, Derek sends me a gift to find out if I'm wearing heels right now. Who wants to vote? Do, 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 do. Who thinks I'm wearing heels right now? If you answered no, who would be right? I'm wearing these cute little flower shoes. Okay. <laughs> Derek's always asking about my heels and my feet. That's his thing. Um, math man, Catherine, you were my favorite actress on Darn Man. I love that you were doing this Q&A. How are you? Well, math man, you should join us because I am here every Sunday doing this. Um, why tram simp? I'm really demotivated recently. You could help me by giving me some advice on how to always stay motivated and don't let the negative energy overtake me. You got to fight back. I've got a lot of, have you watched some of the videos on my channel about being motivated? Actually, didn't I just put one out on Monday about um, how to be motivated even when you're depressed? Here's the thing about depression and being demotivated. All the deadly D's come from the devil. Actually, his first two letters are D-E. Demotivated. Depressed. You know, they're all... He's got all the deadly D's. Denial. Despair. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a list. Of all the deadly D's, I'm gonna. I'm writing this down so I can remember to do this. The devil's deadly D's. Devil, deadly. Oh, dead. D E. Devil. D E. He. All the bad D words, like that's that's all from the devil. De deadly D's. Okay, so here's the thing. Depressed. When you're depressed, you're pushed back. So you got to get rid of the DE. You got to get rid of the devil. You have to push back. When you're depressed, you have to press. When you're demotivated, you've got to push forward and motivate. Despair, exactly. Despair, all the deadly D's from the devil. You got to get rid of it. It starts here. It starts here. The motivation has to start here. You have to find it within yourself, a reason to keep going. Do you know that what you're listening to that's getting you demotivated, that's telling you it's not worth to try, why bother, why am I doing this, it's never going to work out, those are all just thoughts. Those thoughts might not even be the truth. And even if they are the truth, you don't have to believe it. You don't have to believe anything that stops you from living the life you want to live. Do you know there was an actor um, <clears throat> who was told in his acting class um, by a famous, famous person, by a famous film person, you are the worst actor I have ever seen. He didn't let that stop him. He is William H. Macy, and he has won an Oscar. So if he would have gone home from acting class that day and quit because this prominent person, should I tell you who it was? Those of you who are in the film industry or love plays or love will know. It was David Mamet. David Mamet told Bill, William H. Macy, you are the worst actor I have ever seen. What do most of us do? We go home and cry about it. We say, oh, forget it. Even my own acting teacher doesn't believe in me. I might as well quit. I might as well just give up. He didn't give up on his dream. So whatever thoughts you're believing that are keeping you depressed, demoralized, demotivated, need to go. You have the choice. Every day you have the choice. Am I going to believe this thought that's going to keep me down? Or am I going to believe that there is hope for me? Am I going to believe the scripture that says all things are possible for me? Brittany found a, a, a positive word that starts with a D. But honestly, like, not, look at like 80 to 90% of them are the devil's deadly Ds. So, um, truly, do, do a study on it. You'll see. Not every word in the world, of course. There's some, there's some good words that start with D. Um, so, <laughs> now everyone's going to go on here and prove me wrong with the deadly Ds. I'm only talking about the devil's deadly Ds. 
Not, but not the D words, that, that are good ones. <laughs> okay, apparently there's some ruckus going on in the chat. So you have to fight back. That's really what it is. You have to fight back. Don't let the negative energy take you over. Fight back. Nicola, thank you for the thank you for the heartfelt gift. I appreciate it. Um, Karen and Dusty are finally here. You'll have to go back and watch the first half. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. So let me see if I missed some of your guys' questions. There's Nicholas says there's a difference between being nice to someone and them taking advantage of you. Yeah, and pray about that. Pray about that because I, I fell into that trap for a long time and it had to do with my worthiness issues. I would go over and above for everyone and they would be using me and treating me like crap. And you got to know the difference between giving and being kind and then getting used. Lucas likes Matthew. That's his favorite character from the Bible. Have you guys been watching the series The Chosen? I just started watching that. Everybody's been talking about it for a couple years. But I just started watching it. It is so good. I was like, not really wanting to watch it at first because I thought, I've seen lots, of, I've seen dozens of movies about the Bible. Like, how's this going to be any different? But it, it's really good. It's really good. Okay. I hope you are doing all right. Oh, yes. Thank you so much. Abba said, Abba's, yeah. So the good news is, we, we didn't know when we were at the airport. And, and then I'm sitting at the airport and then masses of people just come running, screaming. Everyone is taking off running. And my, my friend, she, she's probably smarter than me. She just left all her bags, all her luggage and took off running down like the thing to get on the plane. Because we didn't know where the shooter was. We, we, you know, we heard people running and screaming over the intercom. They announced there was an active shooter. And, um, I just kind of like, I was like, I just kind of scooted over and just started praying, started praying in the spirit, praying in my heavenly language. I hid behind, like, wasn't really hiding that great. I hid behind like a marble pole. And then I was like, oh man, my books, my life work is on that computer. <laughs> so I'm like, look, I run out to my bags and I'm getting my computer. That's not, that's not the smart thing to do. Don't do that. But I was like... I'm, I'm, just, I'm sitting behind this marble pole column with my computer and I'm praying in the spirit and I'm like, well, I got my life's work with me. And then I'm like, well, that's silly because if I do get shot, they're going to shoot through my computer. So that's not the wisest thing. I don't know. Can a, can a bullet get through? It doesn't matter. It didn't happen. Thank God they got the, they got the shooter contained and it wasn't one of those situations we found out later. We didn't know at the time where we're like, our hearts are racing, we're freaking out. We didn't know at the time that it was just a domestic dispute. It wasn't an insane person coming to shoot everybody up. Apparently, it turned out to be a woman who was angry with her husband because he was going to Chicago. I don't know what was in Chicago, but she wasn't happy. So um, she came with a gun. And Luckily, she, nobody got hurt except for her. She got shot in the leg by the police. But apparently, she only shot up at the ceiling, not at anyone. But I'm pretty sure she's still going to get jail time for that. It, it shut the whole airport down for hours. I ended up being stuck between the airplane and the flights that day for 12 hours. I was supposed to shoot for Darman. And I my, my plane did not... I, just never came so I'm sure some somebody else got that role um I know you guys I'm overdue to let you know to do a part two of the Darman videos I was supposed to be in <laughs> you guys said you wanted to see that so <clears throat> okay we're all over the place today aren't we but I guess that's the way Q&A's are uh we've got Lidu hi Catherine I'm glad to see you my eight-year-old daughter likes you and your message a lot she is watching with me now. Well, hi! What's her name? Oh, I'm so happy you guys are watching. Well, if you're still here after that crazy story, I don't know. <laughs> Nicholas says, Catherine is so inspirational. All right, looks like uh, looks like we got some spammers on today. Um, Derek, um, I think so. 
I think I'm going to go to Bible study tomorrow. I'm, I'm planning on bringing a friend. So I was supposed to shoot tomorrow night uh, for Darman. I was supposed to shoot Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, but then uh, they just rescheduled me. So I wasn't going to be available, but now it looks like I probably am unless something happens. So I am shooting one video this week for Darman. It's... Um, it's another one with Mikey and Jaden, <clears throat> so be on the lookout for that. <laughs> Angela's letting everyone know Catherine doesn't have time for foolishness. Well, she wants a peaceful chat. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, I am possible. Impossible, if you separate the words, is I am possible. Abba says I'm being bullied and I was stabbed by my bully? And they didn't get in trouble? What the heck? At school? Where where did this happen? Did you turn them into the to the principals, to the teachers, to the police, to your parents? What do you mean they didn't get in trouble? That's craziness. Okay, Haley wants to know the best piece of advice you were given. I have been given so much good advice in my life. So, 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 so much good advice. Um, the one that comes to mind right now... Uh, I always say never take advice from someone you wouldn't trade places with. But um, one of my other favorite ones, if I can get the quote right, is from Dr. Seuss. Have you heard of him? He writes children's books. And I think he says, say what you feel. I'm probably going to get the quote wrong. Say what you feel and be who you are because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. So... Just be you. Don't try to pretend to be like somebody else. Okay, so uh, Unknown Ball Legend was watching church. Now he's back. Blessing Ofori says, I love watching you on Darman. Um, oh, Bethel. Hi, Bethel. Thanks for watching. Seattle Green says, My favorite character you play in Darman is anything mean, lol. Um, you're so good at just pretending to be mean. I know, I've, I've noticed, I get so many like comments now on my new TikTok channel, like, there's the Karen, there's the racist, there's this, and I hate, I hate that they call, I hate that they call mean people Karens. Like, they should have just made up some name, like, jerk face, boogie butt, I don't know. <laughs> and so, <laughs> you're being a jerk face, boogie butt, whatever. Instead of taking an innocent person's name and, tarnishing it but pretending to be mean I haven't had a mean role lately what's your favorite Darman role you've had mine is probably Mikey's mom because you do that role so well thank you I actually made a video here on my YouTube channel please watch it it's called my eight favorite Darman videos that I'm in okay uh, guys, if you want Catherine to follow you on platform, send her a private message. Yeah, I'm not going to look back through this chat and try to find you guys. That's, that's for sure. Um, Haley, thank you for the gift. I love your videos, Catherine. They're so inspiring. Thank you. BH says you look stunning. Um, okay. Yes, Dr. Seuss books are good. All right, good. Frank put the actual quote. Be who you are and say how you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Don't you love that quote? It's like, just be you. And the people that have a problem, when he's talking about people who mind, the people that have a problem with it, goodbye, they don't matter. And, and, and it's not going to matter to those um, that, that do matter. The, the people... That the people that do matter aren't going to mind, I guess, is basically. Lucas, why did you pull that kid's ear? Oh, my gosh. I did not want to do that, but the director told me to do that. And I didn't actually hurt him. They, that was all acting. That's kind of what they do in wrestling. Ha! You know in a wrestling, when you get, uh, you get hit, you get slammed, they're, like, hitting. You think that sound is from them hitting the person's face, but they're, like, hitting their own hand when they do it, or they're slapping themselves. Wrestling is a lot of, it's a lot of show. It is still wrestling and you can still get hurt, but there's a lot of show and an enhancement of sounds and noises for sure. 
You shouldn't try to be someone you're not, especially to impress people who don't even care about you. That's right, VS. Why do we do that? Um, Skull Gaming is going to the beach. Uh, Jackie, whenever you reply, I get happy. How many times will you take Mikey's iPad? I don't know, BH. I don't know. I'm going to do it as many times as it's in the script. <laughs> Okay. Would you want to play a mean character, Catherine? Sure, why not? I'm an actor. I play any type of character. Bethany Holder is letting me know her name. Uh, I watched some of the Dr. Seuss films, too. I know they've made some out of his books. Um, did he write, in my imaginings, or did he write The Grinch? Was he the one that wrote The Grinch that stole Christmas? Uh, and we get back to getting your PS5 taken away for good. <laughs> oh my gosh. So questions for me. I think I've gone through the comments I've missed. And we've talked about working it out. We, we, we went a lot of places today. Um, he wrote the Lorax. Okay. Yeah, he wrote... I was reading to Eli recently. One fish, blue fish. It's another one of his. What else? What are you guys' favorite? He did write How the Grinch Stole Chris. That's what I was saying. Well, that's what... That math man says. So, what have you been dying to ask me all week? But it wasn't show when you got whacked in the head with a bar stool, right? Oh no, they did that completely wrong. It was supposed to be show. So here's, if they were doing it right on that show, you guys, did you see the clip from Friday? The video from Friday, I put one of my old wrestling from wrestling show I was on like eight years ago or something. They were supposed to, when you're in Hollywood and you're doing stunts, that was supposed to be made out of balsa wood. That's a really lightweight wood that you could, that you don't want to sit on, but you use that to break over people. So when you see fights in movies, um, it's made out of like a balsa wood, which is light. That's not going to hurt you. So, the what what she was supposed number one if i knew how to speak up for myself and i knew that that was not a prop bar stool but it was a real bar stool i would have i would have said let's practice this first let's practice where you're gonna hit me let's stand in the ring there was no practice run um it was not a fake bar stool it was a real bar stool so it was real wood and she was, so I was standing in the wrestling ring and there was ropes going across my back, uh, the wrestling ropes. She was supposed to hit me right here where it would not have hurt. Um, and it was supposed to be a fake bar stool made out of balsa wood. It was a real bar stool. And the only reason it broke is because they made, cert they made cuts in it. They made certain cuts in it so it would fall apart easier. But she, instead of hitting me back where she was supposed to hit me, whacked me in the back of my head. And me acting like I'm hurt was me actually literally being hurt. I think I got a concussion. I was like all out of sorts when they were asking me, are you okay? And I was like, I think so. And this is like reality TV and I was really hurt. So, of course, back then I didn't have worthiness issues, so of course I didn't say anything. I don't even think I went to the doctor. Um, yeah, but now I know better. <laughs> I wish I knew then. <clears throat> what sleep book are you talking about, math man? Uh, we're talking about Cat in the Hat. Uh, Bethany wants to know, will you interview Carlos Chavez for your three questions with Cat series? So... I would like to, you know, it kind of just depends. That is like an impromptu series I came up with. I, I came up with it about a year before you guys started seeing any of them. I came up with it and I didn't know if it was going to take off or if you guys were going to like it. So it would be like whenever I would go to work, if we had a lunch break or we had downtime, whoever I was there with, <clears throat> uh, I would say, hey, do you, you know, after lunch, do you want to take a few minutes so I can ask you questions for this? So... I would only basically have the opportunity to talk to whoever was there that day. I think I've only worked with um, Carlos once. 
Can you guys remember any other time? I, I worked with him on my favorite one, More Hugs, Less Suicide, or Teen Threatens to Jump Off a Bridge or whatever. That, I think, might be the only one I've ever worked with him and done a scene with him before. So it's kind of like who I who I interview is kind of like who's there. So I don't know if I will hunt him down and find him. Because um, right now, I don't know, are you guys liking that series, The Three Questions with Cat? Did she apologize to me? Um, probably. I don't remember, but honestly, yes, she should have hit lower, but the, the, the producers and directors should have never um, used a real chair. <laughs> that hurt. Okay, do you think actors in the big movies get hurt in fight scenes? They do get hurt, but they have safety coordinators. We had like fight coordinators. We had stunt coordinators. We had someone, you know, working out the moves we would do and stuff. Um, so there's, there's, and th those were like, we had real pro wrestlers there who wrestled for four years on GLOW, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. Not the TV series that Netflix put out a couple of years ago, which was based on the original show. The original show from the 1980s. So the show I worked on that you guys saw on Friday, that was the same director and creator of the 1980s show so for what it's worth um but yeah actors get hurt in the movies all the time bad stuff happens i mean look at look at the people who've died with the um the gunshot the alec baldwin that western got because that one person died and a couple people injured um you know didn't and isn't that how was it Bruce Lee's son? Did he die? That famous fighter from a blank, a, a blank in a in a gun on set. You just you just can't be too careful. I I worked on films early on. There's just one film. I mean, I got a lot of I got a lot of bruises and I got pretty beat up when I did Cannibal Corpse Killers. Did you guys see that movie? It's on Amazon. It's on iTunes. It's on. Um, Xbox, it's on Redbox, it's on Fandango now, I think it's on YouTube. So in Cannibal Corpse Killers, I had like four fight scenes. I had, I was covered in bruises for that. And, um, I mean, we're shooting, we're like having a fight scene on a dirt road and there's rocks everywhere. You know, if it was like a big budget Hollywood movie, they probably would have come along first and swept the big rocks out of the way or laid down some soft dirt that didn't have rocks in it. So I had like bruises from rocks all over me. There was another movie I did. I don't even know if it, I need to call that director and see if it got released. I came home and I had like bruises all up and down my arm cause I was fighting my dad off of me. Um, I'm gonna make myself a note. You guys seem to like when I post these old videos I've been in cause a lot of times you guys only know me from Dar Man and you guys are like, is that? Your first time acting? I'm like, no, I've been doing this for a long time. So sometimes I can get the footage. Um, and if I can post it, that would be really cool. Sometimes I can't get in touch with the directors anymore. Like, I don't know what happened to them. Or they don't want to give me a copy of it. Or they don't want to allow me to post it. So there's like <clears throat> probably 70 or 80 films <clears throat> that I've been in that I don't even think I have seen. So... You know, that's a thing too. All right, so another time I did a very unsafe movie. I was an idiot. I was brand new to Hollywood. I was just a kid. And I mean, basically I didn't know my butt from my head. The director was having me run across the freeway. Like six or eight lanes of traffic in Malibu. Oh. Somebody wants to see my pen. <laughs> I have a green guy like this and a blue guy and a red guy. <laughs> He's got a little, little curly hair. Um, running across traffic. These cars, who knows if they were going to be able to slam on the brakes. I mean, I tried to go when I didn't see traffic. But that film, uh, that's the same film with the guy with the bad breath. Okay. 
running across traffic, and then he had me doing this scene where I was falling down on the railroad tracks and like running and like flipping. I was literally running down rail tracks, flipping, flipping and falling, getting bruised up everywhere. Okay, if this were a real big budget Hollywood movie, there would have been a crash pad for me to land on. So what they do is they have you run, they have you fall onto a crash pad. You, so you see them flip in the air and fall, but you don't see them hit the ground. They pull the crash pad away. Then you like, ugh, ugh, then you get up from it as if, you have to watch the editing. Watch the editing and fight scenes. When they fall to the ground, 99% of the time, you're not gonna see them actually from the flip fall to land on the ground. You're gonna see the flip fall, they're gonna maybe cut to another person or do a quick cut, remove the mat. So, well, yes, and you're right, Frank. In big budget movies, they have a stunt double. But some, you know, some actors wanna do their own stunts. Like, did you see the movie um, Yellow Hair? She did all her own stunts. Those were crazy stunts. Tom Cruise a lot of times does his own stunts, but he has to prove to the insurance company that it's safe because what happens the reason one of the reasons they have stunt people because if fine. the actors get hurt I said I fine. then it shuts down the production and the movie may not finish or they have to shut down for weeks while the actor recovers if they cut recover I said introducing introducing new scene ah so bright wait are you doing this on Facebook no it's it's YouTube but I couldn't figure out the landscape <clears throat> by Lucas. This is sponsored by Simon's It's new. You want to you want to see them? Oh, it's, it's done on this. Uh, oh boy, I thought we were done with these commercials. I thought you were going to come inspire us with a word of wisdom, oh, but you're instead instead you're showing us cinnamon rolls. This is what cinnamon roll looks like. So so tiny. You have to turn your hand so they can actually see it. It's a little baby cinnamon roll. Yep. Okay. Thumbs up? Okay. I, I like these better than two rolls. Okay, so he also tried the Churros version of Cinnamon Toast Crunch, but he likes the Cinnabons better. Okay, I got to almost all the questions so, today. So, thank you all for, also, the, by the way, this is not sponsored. Um, this is this. Wait, that's kind of the Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Blah, 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 blah. That, that, that's all. Okay, sweet. Bye, y'all. Bye, guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs>